Hello, I'm Dave Speakman. Today I've got my friend Darren Glover back here again, and we're going to talk about something else, which is how, as a student or as a parent, do you choose a guitar teacher or an instrumental teacher, essentially, for yourself or for your child? I thought this would be something that would work much better with talking to Darren. Darren has a lot of teaching experience as well. We both teach. I teach around East Cheshire. Darren, you teach around... The other side of Cheshire, really, and Wigan. Yeah, um, yeah Wigan, Lancashire. Cheadle, yeah. Cheadle around there. Yeah, and a lot around Wigan as well. And of course, both of us teach online as well. So if you yeah. were looking for anybody for lessons online, we are both available. But we might not be the right teacher for you. So let's discuss that and, and, and try and work out who is the best teacher for you? How do you know how to pick the right teacher? Yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> I think it's very costly as well if you're going to keep trying different teachers and things like that, isn't it? But Yeah. Yeah, um, choosing the right teacher. I suppose the first choice is probably geographical, isn't it? Unless yeah. you are of a professional standard and you're looking to have lessons with somebody who is um, famous, reputable, something like that, yeah. in which case you, you do what you want. You fly to New York, you go and have lessons with Osnoy for the, for yeah. the day and you fly back, which, you know, I know people have done that. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm coming to London! Choosing the right teacher is difficult. Um, I mean, I've had students which I've thought would be better passed on to other people. Not necessarily because they were too good or anything like that, but it's just the approach to what I feel what musical learning is was yeah. different to what their idea of how they wanted to learn a musical instrument was. Yeah. So I, totally. What, one of the most important things I think actually is to have somebody who plays the instrument that you want lessons yeah. in yeah. professionally. Yeah. And somebody who plays that instrument in the style of music or the genre that you are interested yeah. in. Yeah. So if you want to learn classical guitar, don't go and have guitar lessons from the the metal guitarist. Yeah. But if you're into the metal, then he's the person that you should be having lessons yeah. with. How can less be more? It's impossible. More is more. I suppose this is less important when you're a beginner or a child, but, but not necessarily because people can do quite well quite quickly, can't they? You find even yeah. after a year or so, people are... Some students that I've taught are really good after a year. They're sort of... Yeah. Towards grade five, six, some even eight after a year, you know, some people, the, the rate of improvement, particularly if they've got a good teacher, can be mm. sensational actually, can't it? Yeah, it can. Um, yeah, I mean, the difficult thing is getting getting the right teacher straight away at first, so whether you're a parent or you're a little bit older and you're looking for a music teacher or a music tutor. Um, if you don't know anything about music, that's where the difficulty lies. I know there's, well, I've heard of people out there saying, oh, my son or my daughter has lessons. He's great, this guy, and he's got hundreds of students, and and I've heard what he's been producing, and it's not good. You know, the, to the parents, always saying, it's great, I can hear a little bit of that tune there, a little bit, and you think, oh, this this is terrible. Yeah. This guy's busier than ever. You know, so that's, I mean, And you as quite as often have, inherit yeah. students, don't you? You who, do, yeah. Who, and who they've that's been happy. Been taught things You're wrong. happy with that yeah. because they don't, they've not got any uh, scale to balance it with or to reference yeah. it against. So it's difficult to find the right uh, tutor. Um, also, I mean, personality comes into it as well, isn't it? You might get a tutor you just do not connect with, don't get on with, or you might find the tutor that you do. You might not be that, you know, you might not be that experienced himself as a, a player themselves. It, it's just an absolute minefield uh, to get into and you know the thing is is to do your research and still to this day I get phone calls from people for lessons and, and I know for a fact I would be the best person for that person to come to but they don't, they go somewhere else and mm. that's just the nature of it, that's what happens but uh, but uh, and, but and I do also know that I've had some kids who've started to get into all the Van Halen stuff and that you know and the Joe Satriani and there's only so far I can take with that. Number one I've never really practiced that stuff and the reason is because it's never been the direction I've gone in. It's never been something that, oh yeah, I want to play that. Well, it's not what, Just you, it's not what you're passionate about. It's not what, no. So, so yeah. I would rather move them on to someone else. Yeah. So, you know, or if there's a, a child or an adult who's, oh, I just want to knock some chords out and not play that. That sometimes can become a little bit unenjoyable for a music teacher mm. who would rather, 
you know, show you the inner workings of music and how it works and, uh, you know, and, and about listening to music and, you know, copying people and learning from that. You know, you mm. might just get some guy who wants to do some campfire stuff. What's he doing? I thought the sun. It's weird, I don't like it. For me, there wouldn't be a lot of longevity in that, but some other guys love to teach that stuff, you know, they sure, that's what I want to do. That's brilliant. And there's, there's quite a lot of places online to learn things like that as well, though, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, I mean, that is the best place to go, really, isn't it? I mean, you str scroll through YouTube, something, look at some beginner guitar lessons, beginner bass lessons, find some websites. You'll soon, soon start to find the reputable ones. If that means it's good or not, I don't know, because some of them are so well produced with all the dots on the fingers and the colours and stuff like that and it looks great to get you started. Are you talking about my YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it's brilliant. <laughs> but you know, you might get some, it's just, you know, th that might attract people then, you know, like yeah. really high production value but the content might not be as good as it could be yeah. and then you get some which content's amazing but it's not sold in a, it's not sold very well, you know, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. A really important thing, especially if it's, you're a parent and you want in somebody to teach your child is just to make sure that the tutor has the relevant DBS and safeguarding training. Yeah, you definitely want that, yeah. Things like that are really important. Um, even even if it's a friend of the family, I think it's really important, particularly the safeguarding side of things. If it's yeah. a friend of the family, presumably you know whether they've yeah. uh, done time or not. Um, but the safeguarding training is just important so that they know how to behave and they know how to spot things I'll link a video here which we talked about how to become a music teacher, how to become a guitar teacher. And some of the information in there is possibly relevant to you choosing a, a music teacher as yeah, well. Absolutely. In terms of looking for somebody, the best place to look for somebody really is to ask around and find somebody who's who has a reputation. Yeah, that's it, yeah. So if you have any if you have any friends who are musicians, they're yeah. probably the best people to ask, really. If you have friends who are professional musicians, somebody who's a professional guitarist will know who the best drummer in the area is for you yeah. to have lessons yeah. with, and will be able to steer you clear of people who perhaps their personality isn't right, even though they've got yeah. a reputation for teaching. Not to name any names! <laughs> <laughs> Not quite my tempo. It's all good, no worries. Often, I suppose, you might decide to have lessons with somebody in a school or a college. You might decide that your child should have lessons at the school. It's usually a reasonable suggestion, yeah. but again, I think I'd read the CV of that person. I'd, I'd probably, I mean, most musicians are approachable by nature. They're out gigging, they're out working. They have to be approachable. If they're not approachable, they're probably not working very yeah. much, really. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, so even if they're teaching in a school, I would find their website, I would send them a message mm -hmm. and then they'd probably just say, yeah, give me a ring yeah. and you can have a little chat with them. Most musicians like to chat as well. Yeah, so, have a um, chat. Yeah, definitely. Just have a chat, get a feel for them. If yeah. you get a feel for them and you think that they're right and they've got the DBS, the safeguarding, yeah, yeah. they're playing the instrument that you want to play in a style or, you know, if you're into, you want to learn to write music, then you know, see somebody who's creative and somebody who's doing that, then that's the right person. You know, you, you have to get a feel for these things usually, don't you? You do, yeah. And that also with uh, much younger kids, I don't mind this. Um, I, I like the parents to sit in the lesson, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I know a lot of teachers. Particularly in the, first, no, in the yeah. first 10 lessons yeah, or so. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And they, especially if it's a very young kid, then most of the time, all the time. And again, you're protecting yourself yeah. really by doing that, but also, um, as you're going through the lesson with a younger child, the parent or whoever brings them to the lesson is seeing what's happening in the lesson. They, they're understanding what they need to practice. They know what they, where they need to be the week after, what they need to do. So they become actively involved in the process as well. So that's a yeah, good reason for absolutely. having a parent in there, yeah. What do you think a good age to start a musical instrument is, Dan? A good age to start a musical instrument? Well, um, I sort of think it was, you know, seven eight years old mm -hmm. i mean i've got some kids who are five and six but very few five and six kid year old kids can you get to focus uh, within the mm -hmm. discipline of learning something like a musical instrument well i've got two at the minute two five-year-olds who are doing great you know um but yeah but around about the seven or eight age mm -hmm. but then i've had some kids who have you know come at 12 and 13 
as well. Some you know. of my best students have only started playing the guitar when they were in year eight or year nine. Yeah. I know Mike Walker, who's possibly the best guitarist in the world, told me that he only started playing guitar 18. when he was about 17 was or 17, 18. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and then you listen to recordings of him a year later and he's uh, yeah. better than I'll ever be. So it's yeah, that's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there, I think uh, there's no age limit as such. Um, um, my daughter, my eldest daughter, she was reading music quite well by the time she was seven. Yeah. And now her, her playing's really evolved now. She's a great player, brilliant sight reader. So music was around from a young age. And I think if you're an adult learner and you're deciding that you want to have lessons with somebody, again, the best thing to do would be to phone them up, have a little chat with them, talk about what you want to get out of it. Yeah. And, and, and see if that's something that the teacher will take you in that direction. If it was me and somebody phoned me up and they wanted lessons in a, in a particular way and I didn't feel that I was suitable for that, I would pass them on to somebody else. I'd just yeah. say, yeah, that sounds great what you want to do there. Here's somebody else's number. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because I know the guys who are really good at teaching like that as well. So really what you need is a checklist. So if you want your child to have music lessons, You've got to feel comfortable yourself, so you've got to look at um, is the person, have they got a presence on Facebook, social media, um, YouTube, whatever. It doesn't matter if they've not, if you already know about them. Have a look locally, local guitar teachers, um, especially if you're just starting out, look on YouTube. Um, and then just check that you've got the, you know, they've got the relevant like kind of DBS and safeguarding policies and things like that. If not, if you don't have that, just make sure you sit in a lesson with them. Um, and like you say, it's have a conversation, bring these people up. They want your business, so they're gonna, they'll, they'll chat to you. Hmm. That's it. Yeah. That's all I've got to say on that. If you have any questions about this, please do leave them in the comments below. Darren has his own YouTube channel as well, which I'll link at the end of the video. And Darren will keep an eye on the comments as well, or, or if somebody Absolutely. asks Darren a question, I'll give him a little nudge and ask him to answer that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. And um, thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel and like the video. It's really helpful in what I'm doing here. If you like these videos with, with Darren where we're discussing topics like this, please do let me know and we can do more videos like this. If there's anything that you want really video wise, again, leave me a comment below and I'm happy to do a video on anything really. Great, thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.